Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's May the 15th today and we're looking at uh, 1 Chronicles and chapter 13. In this passage we see that David brings the ark home. David consulted with the captains and of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. You know this is a, a sign of a great leader and a great king is that he doesn't just go off on his own. Saul was like that. He often did things on the spur of the moment as he just felt fit. With David he consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader and David said unto the congregation of Israel, If it seems good unto you that it be of, of the Lord our God, then let us send abroad our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and the Levites that are in their cities and suburbs, that we may gather themselves unto us, and let us bring the ark of, ark of our God to us. For we inquired not after it, in the days of Saul. Now let me just stop a moment and just think about some of these things. First of all he consults with the captains of hundreds and thousands and with all the leaders. And then having consulted with them he then speaks to the congregation of Israel and it's, he says this, If it seem good unto you that it be of the Lord our God, then let us send abroad our brethren everywhere. You see, there were two things that guided David. First of all, he had to do everything in consultation with everybody. He was not a dictator. He was not like that. He was a person that consulted. But as well as consulting, he also said that if it be of the Lord our God, so what he was doing, he had two things guided him. He consulted with his leaders and then he consulted with the people, but he consulted with the Lord. David was not a lone wolf. He was a leader of men and he always, always sought the Lord. So all the congregation said that they would do so for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. Um, and all the congregation said that they would do so, David gathered all Israel together. You see, this wasn't just a few people of Israel. This was the whole nation gathered together. Um, <clears throat> and um, from Egypt all the way to Hamath. Now, to presume that's from the furthest south to the furthest north to bring the ark of God from kirjath Jearim, And David went up and all Israel to Bala, that is kirjath Jearim, which belongs to Judah, to bring up thence the ark of the Lord that dwelleth between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ohio um, drove the ark, gave the cart, and David and all Israel played before God with all their might, with singing and with harps and with psalteries and timbrels and cymbals and trumpets. And when they came unto the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark, for the oxen stumbled. And notice verse 10. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him, because he had put forth his hand to the ark. And therefore he died before the Lord. You see, Uzzah thought that he was doing something helpful. He thought that he was protecting the ark from being broken. But he wasn't supposed to touch the ark. And therefore he died. David was displeased because God had made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of God that day, saying, How shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark of God to himself, to the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of God remained with his family, with the family of Obed-Edom, in his house for three months. Now, the family, the mother of um, of the family must have been having nightmares. How would she keep the children, how would she keep the little toddlers from touching this 
box of blood. How would she prevent them from touching it? She must have been worried sick. Um, but what does it say? That when the Ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom for three months, the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he had. You see, when God is put at the centre of family life, then there's blessing in the whole home. You see, and not just blessing in the home, but blessing in all that he had. You see, when God takes center place in our families, then we prosper. Now, Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David and timbers of cedar with masons and carpenters to build him a house. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel, for his kingdom was lifted up on high because of the people. And David took more wives at Jerusalem. He had, he had um, uh, 13 sons and daughters. Um, when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, and all the Philistines went up to seek David, David heard of it and he went out against them. And the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of God saying, Shall I go against the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will deliver them into thy hand. You see, David often inquired of the Lord. Yes, he consulted with the people on a matter concerning the ark, but when it came to his personal relationship with the Lord and his personal leadership in battle, it was down to David. And the Lord said, yes, go up. And David went up and uh, the Lord delivered them into his hand. And uh, when the Philistines left their gods there, David gave commandment and they burned all of their gods with fire. And then the Philistines came again. They regrouped themselves and they came into the valley. And therefore David, in David inquired of the Lord again, and shall I go up again? And the Lord said, don't go up, don't go up yet. Turn away from them um, and come over against them near to the mulberry trees. And if it be that when thou hear the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees, then you are to go for battle. For God has gone in front of you to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did go and he did smoke the Philistines. Um, from Gibeon to Gaza, and the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. You see, when God fights your battles for you, when God goes ahead of you to fight your battles, then people are not prepared to take on David. Uh, and David made houses in the city of David and he prepared a place for the ark of God and he pitched a tent for it. And David said, None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. So David assembled all the children of Aaron and the Levites and it gives us a long list of all those that were about that were of that number and he said to them you are the chief of the fathers of the levites sanctify yourselves that meant that they were to wash and they were to put on clean clothing and they were to be holy before the lord both you and your brethren that you may bring up the ark of god ark of the of the lord god of israel into the place that i have prepared for it for behold you did not at the first. The Lord our God made a breach upon us, for he sought him not after due order. See, this was the mistake originally. The mistake originally was that they had the great idea of bringing the ark of God, but they did not go about it in the proper way. So the priests and Levites sanctified themselves to bring the ark of the Lord God of Israel and the children of the Levites bear the ark of God upon their shoulders with staves thereon 
as Moses had commanded according to the word of the Lord. See now what had happened. They had, <coughs> they had consulted with scripture. They'd gone back to Moses. Where Moses had come, where the Lord had commanded Moses that you're not to bring it upon wheels, you're to carry it on shoulders. And David spoke to the chiefs of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music and psalteries and psalms and cymbals and sounds by lifting up the voice with joy. And um, David and the elders of Israel and the captains over thousands went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord that they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. And David was clothed in a robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bear the Ark and the singers and Chetanan, the master of the song, with the singers. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the cornet and with trumpets and with cymbals, making a noise <laughs> with psalteries and harps. Now, when we say making a noise, we don't mean that it was a cacophony. It was in harmony. It was in it was in um, a good... Um, it was in a good harmony, but it came to pass as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. How sad. You know, <clears throat> sometimes our very best deeds, and this was a best deed for David, it was the best, one of the best things he did for years to bring the ark of God into the city of David. But when he was worshipping the Lord and when he was dancing before the Lord, Michelle, her, her culture, you see, was being, um, her culture was being um, scandaled. You see, in those days, it was a scandal to let your ankles be seen. And because he was dancing, she despised him in her heart. You see, she didn't understand that with joy, sometimes even propriety goes to one side. Sometimes even, even the normal customs of life are suspended. For the joy of the Lord fills the heart of the worshipper. Well, there we are. There's my password for today. I wish you every blessing and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.